Jumping right in, we're using the Urban Decay Naked Palette for the eyes today. So much new makeup here. I already prepped the skin and my eyes. You're gonna see that in little clips. I use my Inky List Omega Water Cream, which I've been absolutely loving as my moisturizer. And then for my sunscreen today, it is newer. I don't think you guys have seen me use this, but I've been starting to use this off camera. It's from Round Lab. It is a Korean made sunscreen. You guys know that's all I typically use these days. And this one's even thinner than some of the ones that I've been using, really nice underneath makeup and I've been really enjoying that. So definitely a new sunscreen, doesn't break me out. I do have a little bit of breakouts right now, but that's because I just recently dermaplane, and that always happens after I do that. All about saving your time, let's go into the Urban Decay Naked Palette. Makeup is so full circle. <laughs> Seeing this again, this was one of my more popular tutorials that I used this palette for. They do have a brush that comes with this palette, which I'll be using for it. I'm gonna start with the shade Naked. That's what the palette is named after. I remember always using this shade in my crease. Eyes are prepped. Going to place this in the crease in the outer corner. So the palette is limited edition and it has a new formula. It's been so long, I don't even remember the original Naked Palette formula. I don't even remember the shade looking like this on me. If you've been here since I first used this palette, leave a comment down below. I just want to know how many of you have been here that long. We are growing old together. <laughs> this color pulls very cool on me. I'm actually surprised how cool leaning this palette is. I used to use Half Bake, Smog, Sidecar. So I'm gonna start with Half Bake, maybe put a little bit of Sidecar, a little bit of Smog on the inner corner. Let's start with Smog. I'm just gonna use my finger and just start Placing it on the eye. Then I'm gonna go with half baked and taking sidecar the inner third. I'm just playing around today. I think I'm gonna use buck and deepen it up a little bit. This is where we're going right now. Have no plan for this palette, kind of just using the colors I remember. I'm going to a Jersey Shore party on the weekend. I feel like these are the colors that I used back then and it would work for that look. Maybe you'll see another look of this on my Instagram. Taking a smaller brush, this is just a rougher 13. I'm gonna go in with that shade Buck. Start to deepen up the outer corner. We made it to third week of school before catching cold in our household. I think that's a record. Hopefully you guys are all in good health. September, we just always get hit. Feel a little bit of something coming on. I'm trying to shake it. That's why I'm filming before things get too sick for me slightly congested such is the season I'm not looking forward to these cooler months going back in with that naked shade blend out the edges i just remember this being the best palette and i'm struggling with blending out these matte shades and i just don't remember it being so cool leaning so i think we're gonna just stop there for the time being I'm going to take a little bit of the shade virgin I'm gonna highlight the brow bone my concealer just is a little too warm and olive for these tones, I feel. It's not very flattering. So I'm gonna try and correct that. Then I've been using this eye pencil every day, just with nothing on my lids. This is so pretty, but I thought I'd give it a try today, even though normally I'd pair this probably with something a little bit more warm. This is the Hourglass Gel Liner in the shade Chestnut. Just going to tight line and put it on my lash line. Just really get it into my upper lashes. And then I'm gonna do a baby wing and then just blend it out with a angle brush. I love this color so much. I feel like it's so flattering to my eye color. I think I'm gonna go back and put sidecar all over my lid. Everything else looks just so faded to me. Then for mascara today, we have the new one from Charlotte Tilbury. It looks incredible from what I've seen. It feels so heavy. When I opened this, I was shocked. Is this glass? Because it feels like it. It is so weighted. This is probably the heaviest mascara that I've used. This is what the brush looks like. And we're going to work on one eye at a time. I saw curl and lift for this mascara and yes, I want to try it. The Pillow Talk one worked well on my lashes, but it definitely transferred and was a little messy. So I never really liked it for the wear of it. I'm hoping this one wears better. I can tell that this is a little bit too wet for me right now. So I feel like after a couple weeks, this will be better for me. I'm just so used to my Clio Kill Lash right now that anything that I've been using and comparing to it. Like this just doesn't make my lashes as long as that mascara. Definitely volume. I see my curl and a lift, I guess, but I just don't see the length. 
It's nice and black. It's not too messy. I haven't got it all over my lid shocking as I do with a lot of other mascaras. A little bit, but we can clean that up after. Not too bad. So I'm just going to leave it like that. That's a couple coats of the Charlotte Tilbury. It did give volume and we'll see if this holds a curl because this actually feels like a little bit heavier of a formula in addition to how heavy the packaging is just because of how wet it is right now. So I'm gonna give that time to dry. I do have some new lashes that I was going to use for this video. I have some really natural half lashes here or ones that are a little bit more dramatic. I will see which ones look better gonna pop those on come back and we'll move on to the complexion I think I'm gonna go with the more dramatic lashes I'm gonna save the other ones for no makeup makeup look I think I found these lashes from a girl on TikTok who was doing the Love Island girls makeup so I will link these down below as well as the makeup artist her makeup is so flawless and these were really inexpensive so using the more dramatic ones for the eyes i love how they look skin is already prepped we've had time for our moisturizer sunscreen all that to sink in and we're gonna go ahead and go in with our primer and i asked you guys on instagram as well as in my video for my sephora haul which foundation you guys wanted to see and the huda beauty one won for this one so we're gonna save patrick ta for another day we're gonna start out with the huda beauty easy blur primer which is very similar to the Blur Jam, which I'm sure some of you remember that I used to use. It's just a little bit thinner of a consistency, but smooths out the pores just the same, silicone free, and feels exactly the same on my skin. It has that kind of cooling effect. The whole glowish line is getting discontinued. So to see this primer back is really nice, especially if you have pores and texture like me. We have a lot going on, so we're going to use this all over the face. It does suggest to use more than the potted one used to. The old one, you just needed a pea size amount. This one you need quite a bit more, it says, but I still don't use as much as it says to use. I just kind of go with how smooth my skin feels and once it's covered all the areas, then I feel like we're good. I don't want to overdo it with the layers. I just take my time and press it into my problem areas around my nose, chin, forehead, and then I blend everything out to the perimeter of my face. And what you need to do with this primer is let it sit for a little bit. You don't wanna go in right away with your foundation, otherwise it's not gonna have that same sort of smoothing effect. So you really gotta wait for this to just settle into the skin. I'm going to take a clean BK Beauty 101 brush and we're gonna use this to apply the Easy Blur Foundation which I have two shades here. I have been mixing them, but I'm going to just use my darker shade for the sake of this video. It is going to be a little too dark, a little too golden for me, but I feel like it's not beneficial. If you see two shades mixed, then you can't really see the color. So this is going to be shade Baklava 340G for those who are interested in this specific color. When I don't have a tan, toasted coconut fits me perfectly. It's a light medium neutral. This one's more of my tan shade. So we will be matching the body. It's still going to be slightly too deep for me today, but I just wanted those who wanted to see what baklava looks like on the skin to just see it without it mixed because otherwise I don't find that helpful when shades are mixed. So this is the consistency of the foundation. You can see that it is runny and some people are saying this looks a little dry on them. I don't find that with my skin. I don't find this looks dry at all. My skin is hydrated with it. There's a little bit of niacinamide in this formula, 1.5% to be exact, and it glides on the skin. I don't think it clings at all. It builds nicely. It has good coverage. It wears beautifully. It looks smoothing. It's a very flattering foundation, I feel like, for pores and texture. I'm normal leaning dry right now. I'd say I'm more normal skin. I'm not really dry yet. Give me a month and a half, I'll be pretty dry. <laughs> One light layer, doesn't look like a horrible match for me, honestly. This specific shade, you just can see that I am a little bit more neutral when I build this up. I think one light layer is so beautiful on the skin. I do like to build up mine just because I have generalized redness, a lot to cover, and it just looks the most flattering on my skin. So we're gonna take a little bit more of that foundation, build it up to two layers, 
And this is where the magic happens for my skin. And you can really see that golden undertone now. Finish and the smoothness just looks so good on texture. It honestly looks like better skin because some formulations look like skin or it looks like makeup. This on me looks like better skin, which is what I want. And that's kind of her campaign is to find products that actually look like a filter for your skin instead of using filters. We should have products that make us feel that good about our skin. And this is one of those foundations that truly just looks so incredible. And the whole three-step system she has definitely works. All the products together, the primer, the powder, this foundation. I don't think you need all three, but it does give that super flawless, poreless look when you use them all together. That's the shade Baklava. The neutral and the tans though just looked a little gray to me. So that's why I went with a golden, but probably should have just stuck with my gut one with a neutral. Beautiful finish, super smoothing, super perfecting. I love how it looks even before I go in with powder, which is saying a lot for a foundation. So, so far for me trying this out, I already have two shades. So, you know, I do like the formula. I just got wrong color for my tan. So let me know what color you are when we are more tan, but we're going to be correcting that because I do have a concealer that is very light. And I really wanted to show you this concealer with this foundation because I feel like it works perfectly with it. And it's the new one from MAC. It's the MAC Studio Radiance 24 Hour Luminous Lift Concealer. This is the only marketed luminous concealer I feel like looks actually good on my skin because typically I don't like that area luminous. This one has that coverage, the finish, the dry down, the wear that I'm looking for. So I'm very impressed with this launch from MAC and I was so happy to pick it up. I know a lot of you wanted to see this on my channel. This is going to be light for me. We're gonna work it into the foundation. It's gonna lighten things up too. So everything's gonna work together, be a little bit more cohesive. So I typically wouldn't go this light with this dark of foundation, but since we're correcting things, you're gonna see, it's gonna all work out. Just using a clean hourglass concealer brush to apply the matte concealer underneath my eyes. And we're also gonna use this to highlight the face. I love the coverage and finish of this. It's just so perfect. And you can see it covered up that spot on my skin quite nicely. So it has decent coverage. I just really have been loving this concealer, especially if you use a lot of tinted moisturizers. I don't feel like it's too much because of that luminosity, but it gives the coverage. It just works in with full coverage foundations, tinted moisturizers, basically everything I've tried it with. It's been so stunning. So a new favorite concealer of mine. So happy I picked it up. And you guys told me about this and I had been looking because I know a lot of you requested this concealer. So happy I was able to find it in store at Sephora. They now have it online on Sephora Canada. Really brighten things up that concealer, but you can see works beautifully with that finish. And once we set everything with powder, you're gonna see how flawless the two products together are. I'm just so in love with the combination. We're gonna do a little bit of cream contour. I have the one from Dior, which I've been wanting to show you guys just a tiny bit because this is quite cool. I'm just gonna use my foundation brush and do a little bit to start chiseling the cheekbones. I'm gonna do bronzer on the forehead. I just want a little bit to sculpt my face here. Maybe the jawline too. It's very cool, but gives that shadowed effect. And when you put the powder on top, it's very subtle, which is what I like. Just a tiny amount of contour is all I personally need to really bring out the cheekbones. This is where we're gonna bronze up the skin and I love this color. It will suit a more warm complexion as well. This is from Say, it's their Dew Bronze Bronzer in the shade Swim. It is stunning. So I'm gonna put this on the back of my hand. You can see it almost has an olive undertone to this as well. I feel like a variety of skin tones could use this because I can use this when I'm very fair, when I have a tan, when I'm more light medium. It really is versatile for the color for me. So smooth and just blends in like a dream. There's no demarcation between my foundation and my bronzer. It just kind of naturally bronzes up the area and looks so flattering after you put powder on top and just kind of peeks through. I feel like everything looks a little wild until I set with powder. Just gotta trust the process. I'm gonna go a little bit darker than I would if I use this on top of powder, which you can do actually with this and it works 
totally fine. Since we're gonna be setting on top, I just want it to show up through the powder. Now for one of the best parts, this is so good. I am in love with this powder. It's from Makeup by Mario and it's the new Loose Setting Powder. If you have not picked this up, this is one of my number one recommendations from this video is this powder. It is so flattering. They have a bunch of different colors. Translucent powder, as I'm sure a lot of you know, isn't translucent on certain skin tones. So you need to have that tone in there just so that everyone can get a powder. So I love that he did tones. I have light neutral, which works perfectly for me. I was debating the peach one too. However, I really am happy that I went with light neutral. So I can use this underneath my eyes, which I'm gonna show you. Just make sure any creases are buffed out first. Look at that soft airbrush veil to the skin combined with that foundation. You can already see the softness this is giving without looking dry. It truly is one of the most remarkable powders I've personally tried. I think honestly this is my new favorite loose setting powder just because it never looks dry on my skin. Always looks airbrushed, locks everything down, makes the finish super smooth, just the right amount of set, never looks cakey. It just incredible and I especially like this for all over my face so my eyes are lightly set which you can see smoothed everything out set it beautifully now we're going to take the same powder I just like to work it into my puff on the back of my hand and we're going to start setting the rest of the face goodbye pores goodbye texture hello smooth skin I just did one side of my face you can see that the texture is smoothed out you can still see all the texture on my skin over here and this just lightly softens and gives that soft focus effect, sets everything in place. It's so beautiful on the skin. And because I have a neutral powder, this actually helps that golden undertone. So you can see that this has helped match my skin better. It's just a fixing powder for me. <laughs> Add this on top of anything and it just makes everything look better. <laughs> I feel for me, it is so beautiful. Now I'm gonna go ahead and ruin my face <laughs> right now. I don't wanna do this, but I'm gonna show you anyways. So this is the new Tower 28 powder. And a lot of people are comparing this to Charlotte Tilbury, saying it's better, it's more brightening, more smoothing. However, mine I think is a dud because it looks so dry. I got Palisades Pink, which is the one people are raving about. So I'm just going to flip that puff to the other side and I'm gonna lightly put this in the inner corner just to brighten up the area. It is very brightening. Do you like this side better than this side? Do you like that bit of brightness? I don't think it looks horrible, but it still just makes my eye look a little bit dry to me. I also don't do a bright under eye that often. So it could just be the brightness that just doesn't look good on me anymore. I don't know. I know you guys will let me know. My whole powder has these bumps in it. So I'm already weirded out by the texture of this powder. Just starts to make the under eye for me look dry. Whereas that Makeup by Mario one just looks soft and smooth. So just my opinion on that. Let me know though. I know so many people are loving it. So I feel like I'm the odd one out for that one, but that's just been my experience so far. Could possibly have a dud though, just because of that texture issue I've noticed in the powder. Cause mine has little bumps, which don't typically see in powders. I'm already starting to look dry. It's like as it wears, it honestly looks worse. We have that lightly contoured cheek, a little bit of bronze, nothing overdone for the complexion. Now we're gonna go in with our blush, which dare say is probably my favorite thing in this video. And we have a lot of favorites here. So that's saying a lot. I fell in love with this blush. It's new from Kelly Ray. I love the packaging of it first off. The color is beautiful. It's in the shade Dope. This is going to add some life to the skin. So I'm gonna use my Makeup by Mero F4 brush to apply this. This actually is a blurring liquid cream blush. It is so pretty. I wish they had more shades, honestly, because a lot of them are pretty light. So this color, definitely going to brighten me up. I just work it into the bristles. You can already see on my hand how it gives that smooth sort of look. It doesn't lift. This is going on top of a fully set face and it just looks so smooth. It is such a beautiful formula. I've been raving about this to Babs Beauty. I'm like, you need to try your Kelly Ray if you have not already. And she told me to try the Armani blushes. So she says those are her favorite right now and she hasn't tried these. I need to try the Armani, but right now this is like my favorite blush launch. 
are these Kelly Ray blushes. I just think the formula is so beautiful. Just taking the shade Buck, we're going to finish off the under eye and add a little bit of mascara. I'm gonna take the shade Sin and pop that in my inner corner too. Also taking the shade Chestnut from Hourglass and putting that in my lower waterline. It's actually a waterproof gel pencil. Really good for the waterline. I'm just removing my lip treatment from Laneige and I'm going to do a bright pink lip. <laughs> for today. I actually end up getting the new formulation for the Sephora Collection Cream Lip Stain and I wanted to try out one of the colors. They don't have my watermelon slice anymore though. I can't find it. I got this pink shade. I think it's really pretty in 124. I'm going to use the Maybelline Lifter Liner in the shade Line Leader, which I don't think I've used this color on my channel yet, but I've used other two. Love this formula. So I'm just going to line my lips with the Maybelline, fill in with the Sephora, then we're going to set the face. These Maybelline liners are a dupe for the Fenty, if you're curious. Nice and creamy and long wearing. Then to lock everything down, though I don't feel like you honestly need to, with the finish and the wear of these products, I just wanted to show you how this looks like on the skin. It's from Makeup by Miro. It's the Surreal Skin Soft Setting Spray. I think this is a 16 hour wear product, but it has a really fine mist. I think Mario does three sprays and I do more. We're gonna let that dry on the skin. I'm going to quickly finish off my hair, come back, and I'm gonna talk to you more about these products. I'm back, I feel very glam. The combination of doing something more dramatic with my eyes and a bright, bold lip, very smooth, flawless looking skin. I'm feeling very 2016. <laughs> right now. I can't complain. I love a good glam look. It's funny that I'm into a bright pink going into fall, but here we are. I do have a fragrance that I wanted to finish off this look with. This wasn't even on my radar. It is from The Maker. It's the Fragrance Lover. As soon as I smelled this though, it's funny, I thought this smelled like my best friend. <laughs> So I told her, I'm like, this fragrance lover smells like you or reminds me of you. This is very fall vibes, very much so something I don't typically reach for. This is like, as I said, my best friend sort of fragrance. So it reminds me of her. She got me into the perfume, I think it's 1969. It's what Angelina Jolie wears. And this reminds me of that without that kind of menthol undertone of it. It's very woodsy and romantic, if that's kind of your vibe. And I feel like it's perfect for fall but definitely not gourmand or any sort of typical fragrance that I wear. It's very, as I said, woodsy romantic. I feel like if you like more deep earthy sort of vibes, you'd really gravitate towards this. And as I said, if you're familiar with 1969, that's my first sort of dive in to this type of fragrance. This has oud in it, which for me goes one of two ways. You can do oud and it can be really off-putting for me, but this is oud done right in this fragrance. So it does appeal to me. It's not my typical though. I can't see this being one that I wear too often, but I do really like the smell and I think it's super unique to my collection. So romantic woodsy oud. You'd love this. Let's get into these makeup products. I really want to summarize this video. Tons of favorites. New liquid bronzer from Say in the shade Swim for me is new holy grail as well as this liquid blush from Cali Ray. New holy grail. I love how blurring both of them are on the skin. The Say is just the perfect color. And this for the formula. I do want different colors in the Cali Ray, but for formula wise, the best liquid blush that I've tried in a very, very long time. New number one, I think, because it's actually blurring on the skin, which I need with the texture that I suffer from. This easy blur combo right here from Huda Beauty, the skin looks flawless. This is what I wanted her old formulations to be because they were always a little too heavy for me and looked a little mask-like. This is coverage done right for me. It's not heavy or dry. It is very lightweight, long wearing, and skin-like. Better than skin-like, honestly. <laughs> My skin doesn't look this good. So this gives better than my skin sort of finish. I can see her marketing this as filter in a makeup product because quite frankly, it makes my skin look better than it would otherwise. So I think the formula is really nice for this. I still wanna show you guys Patrick Ta. I know that didn't win this time around, but I will show you guys that hopefully soon. New favorite luminous concealer. I love this for skin tints or this foundation. Anything lightweight, not thick. You have those serum type foundations, anything that's super thin. 
this concealer is so good because it has the coverage but the thinness it has that lift luminosity it just looks so smooth and beautiful underneath the eyes mac this is a new winner they are killing it for me with their formulations and what they're doing i feel like they're finally getting with the times and coming out with products that i'm looking for so this is such a good release for mac i'm really happy with it new favorite loose setting powder from makeup by mario this is incredible i cannot get enough of this if you have not tried it you gotta check this out. I know Sephora sale is probably coming up soon, so I have so many good recommendations, specifically in this video for you to check out. Just not this one. <laughs> this is the Tower 28 powder. So again, let me know if you've had the same issue as me. This has little bumps in it. The whole formula looks off to me. I probably shouldn't even be using it, honestly, but wanted to show you what I was kind of seeing. It does look a little bit dry. I just personally liked my under eye prior to the tower 28 as soon as things get lighter it can look drier and highlight any kind of texture or dryness so i think that's kind of what i'm seeing with that for me if you didn't have my under eyes maybe it would look better on you but for me i just don't think that formula is creamy enough it is a little too dry after using makeup by mario you can just tell <laughs> like it's a very dry formula i don't contour often but this dior contour stick in medium is really nice to give just a little bit more shadow and definition to places where i want to and then this lip combo we have the maybelline lifter which i've talked about already love that and the new formulation from sephora collection these are the cream lip stains I personally can't tell a difference between this and the other ones. Maybe a tad less drying, but I honestly cannot tell a difference. I don't know why they would change it and also not bring back my watermelon slice. So hopefully that's coming, but I don't see it on the website currently. And that was my favorite bright color. So Sephora, bring back watermelon slice for me. The Charlotte Tilbury Exaggerized Volume Mascara. This is another mascara I feel like I just have to revisit later because it's a little too wet for me right now. This often happens with new mascaras for me. I just feel like they work and look a little bit better on me when they've dried out a little bit. So we will revisit. We have other mascaras we still need to revisit for the same reason, but so far I just like other mascaras better than that. This eyeliner from Hourglass is so good. It's waterproof for the waterline. It is a beautiful color. It is a chestnut color that has this maroon reddish undertone. Super flattering if you have green eyes. Check this out. It's been a staple for me for my everyday makeup. And then these two products also have been staples for me. We have the Inky List Omega Water Cream. I've used this in another video. It's just really nice and a lightweight moisturizer if you need something underneath your makeup and don't want something too heavy which is what I'm needing because I have a lot of layers. I find my sunscreen to be moisturizing, so I don't need something too heavy in my actual moisturizer because my sunscreen's also moisturizing. The Round Lab one, I can't honestly read this because nothing's in English except for this tiny print back here. I will have this exact one linked below. I just don't know exactly offhand what's this even called, but I've been using this and loving it. Super thin and I think pairs nicely with my Omega Water Cream and doesn't break me out, so love my korean sunscreen as you guys know and then this setting spray from makeup by mario there's other ones out there that i feel like make my makeup last a little bit longer make my makeup look a little bit more hydrated this one does the job i mean it's not a bad setting spray by any means i just think there's better ones out there but i'm glad i picked it up it does work i have been reaching for it i just wouldn't repurchase it over other ones like charlotte tilbury my delba even my l'oreal setting spray if i want something truly locked down i'd purchase that over the makeup by mario but if you want something really light i feel like it's a good option honestly it does hold your makeup down set it nicely so nothing wrong with it as i said i just honestly reach for other things that is everything for this trying new makeup so many incredible products on the market right now that i've tested out and truly have fantastic formulas this is one of my favorite if not my favorite trying new makeups i've personally done in a very very long time so many good things oh yeah i forgot totally about this urban decay naked palette I personally wouldn't go out and purchase this if you like nostalgia and are looking to pick this up because it's limited edition. You might like checking it out. I'm just into different sort of color stories now. I don't find this overly flattering on my skin tone. It kind of started palettes. They created this just want and need for new eyeshadow palettes, which I'm curious to see how this actually sells. I personally wouldn't have picked it up. I got it in PR. It's cool to test out and revisit old makeup like that, but I just think there's other things that 
I'm gravitated towards more now. This has a ton of shimmery shades in it, very few mattes, which is not my preferred sort of palette. So final thoughts on that. It was fun to use for this video. So thank you guys so, so much for clicking on this video, for spending some time with me today. Thank you for your view, for your comments, your likes, everything you do for this channel. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Love you so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.